Hey everybody, Chris Farad here, and uh, I just thought it would be fun to take a few minutes to share some of the games that I've personally been most excited for after watching uh, all of the E3 conferences. Uh, after I reviewed actually all the announcements in preparation of this video, I realized that there's a ton of games that I'm really excited about, and so I probably could have made a list of like 20 or 25 that I'm interested in, uh, but I settled on choosing the top 10 just to force me to scrutinize my choices a little bit more. As we work through this top 10, I'll have some video in the background of the trailers that were presented as a visual reference. And if you want to find out more information about the game, just check them out on YouTube. There's trailers everywhere, and uh, some of them are just exceptional. Uh, I'm not going to spend more than like 30 to 60 seconds on each one. We'll go through them relatively quick. Uh, but I am curious to hear what your thoughts are as well. I'm sure you're going to agree with a lot of choices, but I'm sure you'll disagree on some as well, just based on your own preferences. So let me know. Uh, before I start the countdown, I do want to share that uh, GOG is having a huge summer sale right now. If you're not familiar with who GOG is, they're a distribution service similar to Steam. But they're owned by uh, CD Projekt. And all of the games that they sell there are DRM free. Uh, some of you may know that I'm partnered with these guys and uh, they sometimes provide me with game codes. I have an affiliate link that when you use it, it gives me a small percentage back in support. Uh, I'm going to have a link below that you can check out if you want to see the summer sale. I would highly advise you do so. Um, also, GOG is giving away 250, that's right, <laughs> 250 free games uh, for viewers of my channel. So thank you so much uh, for them supporting me and thanks to you guys for being on this journey of YouTube with me that's kind of unlocked some of these options and it's a cool way that I can kind of give back to you guys with these free games. There's a Gleam link below that you can follow to uh, to enter to get the free games and after you do that you can get additional entries if you follow me on Twitter or Twitch and that's totally optional. Uh, but yeah, thanks guys for all the support. Um, as I say, this ride has been exceptional. I appreciate you guys being here with me. Without further ado, let's get into my top 10 games from E3. Okay. First up, number 10 is a game called Gears Tactics. Now, we were watching E3, and there was some Gears of War stuff that was being announced, and uh, people in chat were talking about, how cool would it be if we saw Gears of War in, like, an XCOM setting? And I was like, that would actually be exceptional! And lo and behold, later on in the stream, we saw this trailer for Gears Tactics, which is pretty much exactly that. Um, now, personally, this could... <laughs> I think this could be really amazing, or it could be really terrible. Only time is going to tell, but... Having that kind of Gears universe mixed with an XCOM style of game, I think, would fit really well. And uh, I'm excited to see what happens with it. All right, next up in spot number nine, I've got Beyond Good and Evil 2. Now, I've never played the original Beyond Good and Evil. Uh, but when Beyond Good and Evil 2 was announced on the stream, people went nuts in the chat. Everyone was like, what? Beyond Good and Evil 2? And I was like, what am I missing here? So I started doing some research on the original one, and uh, I gotta say, like, the story looks kind of interesting. People were saying that they, this is like one of their fondest gaming memories that they've ever had, and the art style is really incredible. Um, it's very, very unique looking, and just, I, I'm excited for it. I'm definitely gonna check it out, and uh, that's why this is number nine. In the eighth position, I have Fallout 76. I think a lot of people are going to say, well, man, that should be way higher up. Uh, for me, I don't have a lot of experience with the Fallout games. It's always something I've wanted to play and get invested in. I just, has, the timing has never worked out for whatever reason. And uh, this one appeals to me for a couple of reasons. One, because of all the co-op features. Uh, you can go out and do all of the normal Fallout style activities with friends. There's the base building stuff that you can do with friends. You can destroy other people's bases. And the way that they portrayed it was really well thought out. I thought they did an exceptional job of like quelling some of the public's concerns. And for me, this is one that intrigues me enough to say I'm definitely going to try it. And maybe it's it actually encouraging me to go back and try some of the other ones too. So let me know if you guys are interested in something like that, but I know it's probably lower than what a lot of people would rate it as, but for me, it's on 8. It's still in the top 10. Pretty excited about it, and uh, we'll see what happens when it's released. In 7th spot, I've got uh, Metro Exodus. Now, as far as first-person shooter games go, I would venture to say that these are some of the best stories that I've ever played. I've played a lot of first-person shooters in my day, um, but these are done just a little bit differently. I like that they put a lot of focus on, like, customizing your weapons in this one. There was some small amounts of that in the past, but 
I think they've they're gonna like refine a lot of the Metro experience and just this setting that you play these Metro games in is unreal and I can't wait to get more Metro on my hands Metro Exodus is uh, very exciting to me and that's why it's in spot number seven now in sixth position I've got a game that a lot of you have probably seen. It's called We Happy Few, and uh, it's finally got their release date coming out this summer. Uh, in full disclosure, I am like really good friends with uh, the, the guys that run this studio. They're in Montreal. We've been out together multiple times. They're great guys. And uh, this game is like, you can't argue that this has such a unique uh, dystopian vision. It does borrow from like other um, classic stories, but uh, the the way that it's put together, I feel, is just exceptional. And seeing the, the gameplay demo that they've shown at E3 and uh, being able to see some of that first person myself has been really, really uplifting. And uh, I think what people got in early access compared to what you're going to see in the final version is like night and day. And uh, I can't wait to show it to you guys, so that'll be coming up this summer. All right, number five. We're at the top half of the list here is uh, Ghost of Tsushima. Now... When they first started showing it, my first reaction was, okay, this is like more Neo-ish, which is pretty cool. But then as soon as the combat starts, there's two things that I noticed. One, it's just how fluid and like, it felt heavy in the right kind of sense. Like not quite Dark Souls heavy, um, but not as light and airy as Neo. Somewhere in between, it felt really, really good. Uh, the second thing that I really appreciated was that there was no HUD. Like, there was no UI elements on the screen. It was very clean, very crisp. Not to mention that the just the way that the color palette of this game is, the visual aesthetic is, like, mind-blowingly good. Um, there was a couple of, like, cringy moments with some of the voice acting. I'm really hoping that they can figure that out. But uh, an idea came up that I might take advantage of when this game releases and just play it in the original voices and have subtitles in English and I think that would probably come across a lot better but I'm really excited to get my hands on it, it looks really fun and uh, I can't wait to see it okay up next in the fourth position is actually a VR game and I've played quite a bit of VR in my time nothing for the channel I haven't streamed it or anything like that um, but I have not played a horror game in VR and this one is called transference uh, they're working with Elijah Wood and it seems like it's really a combination of like a movie or like heavy cinematics and mixed with some VR gameplay. And it's intriguing because the story seems really unique. Um, the gameplay that's in there looks terrifying. I, I'm actually, I don't know if I can handle playing a horror game in VR. But I'm going to give it my best and uh, see how it is. But um, I'm uh, this one... When it popped up, it was like, okay, VR, fine. You kind of like write it off as like, eh, VR is not that great right now. But the way that they showed some of the character interactions really has gripped me. And uh, it became one of the games that I'm looking forward to the most. And that's why it's in the fourth position. Now, going into the third position, admittedly, these, these next three games are pretty interchangeable in terms of my excitement level. Uh, but I've chosen The Last of Us 2 as the third position. And the only reason it's in the third and not like the first or the second is because it's more of The Last of Us, which we've already experienced. It looks like they've refined the combat a lot. Uh, Ellie has grown up and looks like the story is going to be really engaging and really fun and, and quite a bit different from the first one. There's some uplifting moments that were shown here, whereas the first one is very much depressing. I'm sure there will be more of that. Um, but it's nice to see Ellie kind of getting older and, and understanding herself a little bit more. Um, but the combat that they showed does look really, really, really good. If not a little bit forgiving from the AI side, there were a couple parts where I'm like, I'm pretty sure we'd have gotten spotted there. But at the end of the day, it's a video game and you got to have like some fun aspects in there. Um, but yeah, I, I, I think about The Last of Us, the first one, it was like one of the best gaming experiences I've ever had. That story will stick with me for the longest time. I really want to actually replay it um, because it was so good and I don't typically replay single player stories a lot. Um, but this is in the third position. I'm really excited about it and I'm sure most of you guys would say this is like your top game and it's, it's right up there for me as I say. Okay, we're getting close to the top in second position. I've got a game called Death Stranding, which if you haven't heard about this, you've probably been living under the most gigantic boulder of all time. But Death Stranding by Hideo Kojima looks absolutely 
mind blowing. And when we saw some gameplay at E3, it really left me with like more questions than answers. Uh, you see the little baby in the tank in the front, and they're eating all these weird things, and there's these invisible like representations of I assume death. Uh, don't know what the baby is. Don't know why we're eating the stuff that we're eating. Don't know what those things are. We don't know anything. All I do know is that I really want to play it, <laughs> and it's like it's. The way that it's been presented so far looks exceptional. Don't know a lot about what the actual gameplay is. It looks very heavily stealth-focused, which I am 100% into. Uh, we carry around a ton of equipment on our back, and there's got to be an interesting reason for that. I guess we probably are always staying mobile, taking all of our belongings with us. Uh, but I don't know. I'm, I'm really excited for it, and I'm excited because it's so unknown. But um, I'm sure you guys are too. This could easily, again, have been in the first position for many of you. Uh, and myself too. But... As you can probably imagine, you you could probably guess what my number one is. If you can't tell already, my number one is Cyberpunk 2077. I mean, first of all, CD Projekt Red, The Witcher games, probably the best games I've ever played in my life. And to see what they're gonna do in a whole different world, I like I'm just I can't even I can't even talk about it. I'm so excited. Uh, there are rumors that we might see Siri in there. It's like a weird like kind of. I don't want to get into it too much, but you guys have probably heard some of these rumors as well. Uh, but just the world that they've created, this very, very unique environment. Uh, it is going to be like a first-person story, which is going to be a little bit different from The Witcher. Um, there's a lot of um, press outlets that were part of a gameplay showing behind closed doors that are now talking about what they saw in Cyberpunk. And uh, the leveling system is going to be pretty different. There's driving, there's guns, there's... A it just looks exceptional. I think most people are going to have Cyberpunk in their top, like, three if you had to organize them like I've done. So those are my top ten games, and uh, it's t it was tough to actually put them into a top ten and then put them into an actual order. There's so many good ones out there. Some really quick special mentions, like Shadow of the Tomb Raider looks great. Division 2 could be fun in the right type of setting and context. Even something like Trials Rising was like, that. the way that they present it looks really fun. Uh, let me know what you guys think. If you have some that are not on the list that you think should have been, let me know. And if you think that I'm crazy about one of them, let me know as well. I'd be curious to hear. Anyways, thanks so much for watching, guys, and we'll see you in the next video. Bye.